Hi, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, we are going to get a little more global, and we're going to learn about um, humanity, I guess is a good way to put it, but we'll find out more about that momentarily. But before I begin, as I usually begin, oh, wait, if you have a question later on for one of our wonderful guests, you can always give us a call at 781-270-9199. Or if you have a suggestion for a future topic or a question for later on and you didn't catch the email, you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org. I would like to thank my wonderful guests for this evening. We have, I need my cheat sheet, Jolie Atwood, Stephanie Floridas, Marie, I'm gonna screw up your last name, Belanger, I just said it wrong, didn't I, Marie? Okay, just checking. Uh, and Colleen Moore, director extraordinaire. And we also have staff member Chris Flaherty, whose birthday is today, so happy birthday, Christoph. Um, thank you for not taking your birthday off. And last but not least, I would like to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for Daddy Date Night. Whew, business out of the way. Now, I would like to introduce my wonderful guests for this evening. We have Nadia Alawa. Yeah. Okay. Should have asked that before. And Patricia O'Brien, who represent New Day Syria, which is a humanitarian help organization for helping refugees. Correct? Yeah. So, <clears throat> New Day Syria, um, we are more than just actually help or aid um, okay. for Syrian mothers and children in need. Um, our focus is really mostly empowerment, and we say aid with dignity um, for mothers and children inside Syria, helping them stay in their country, survive what's going on right now, and get on with their lives basically I in a stable and safe manner. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. But um, can we back up a little bit, mm -hmm. and can you kind of tell me... Um, your backgrounds, how you came to this area, you know, the, Bo the greater Boston area, and maybe why you decided to establish New Day Syria. And then we have a little video clip that kind of... Yeah, that was a lot of questions. Um, in, okay. in <laughs> so how did you come here? The <laughs> well, um, how are we, what are we doing in Burlington, you mean, yeah. in terms of our work? Right. Or, well, you know, I mean, uh, are you originally from um, New England? No, I'm not originally from New England. Um, I've been in New England for close to 20 years now. Oh, so okay. So this is, this is home. I became a U.S. citizen a few years ago. I was actually during the Syrian revolution, the whole process that has been happening since 2011 with people inside Syria uh, revolting against um, the dictatorial regime and wanting to have okay. democracy and freedom of speech, the things we take for granted here. So in, uh, during that process um, is actually when I became an American citizen. I'm originally oh, okay. Danish, born and okay. raised in Denmark. Um, and I'd like to tell people that so that they can get their mind off of where my accent is from. Uh, you know, they get a little bit confused. Accent? What accent? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't hear it. I think it sounds pretty normal. <laughs> very British or, or New Englandish, <laughs> But um, yeah, so my father is actually Syrian and I've never lived in Syria, but I, you know, I have children that are three quarters Syrians. My, okay. my husband is Syrian. So that was my direct con connect, that is my direct connection to Syria. Uh, okay. So um, when the Syrian revolution started in Syria um, o o over six years ago, um, it started by some middle school children writing some graffiti uh, on their school walls, basically. That's what catapulted the humanitarian oh, catastrophe okay. that we have today. Um, I was moved by that, by the fact that the children um, who wrote that graffiti, they were the same age as one of my children. Wow. Um, my, my son Makes it really hit home. Exactly. You know, um, not just that we have children who are suffering mm -hmm. because of what's happening in Syria, and we are mothers ourselves, and it, you know, it matters to us how other children and how other mothers they feel and how they survive. But also the fact that you know it was children who were like, we want the same rights as other people. We want to be able to have freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. it, we, you know, we just want a few things to be different, um, and. Over the years, inside Syria, many of the stories that have come out have been stories of very brave children. 
that have gone out of their way to help other children and in, in more need than themselves. And, and okay. that's something that really moved me and kept me awake at night. What are these mothers thinking? Not just do they have suffering children and babies who now mm. are under siege and they can't get access to baby milk, but other mothers were losing their children to torture and killing by the regime because their children were brave and went out of the way to help other oh, children. Okay. Um, so that's just, you know, my personal, um, really, what caught me, what really made me focus on what's going on in Syria and that I had to make a difference. Okay. <coughs> now, Patricia, how did you get involved in the whole thing? So I, I've had the benefit of knowing Nadia for probably 15 years now. Uh, we met at the Mesjid on Lexington Street, the okay. ICB, the Burlington Mosque. I was an administrator for the weekend school, and Nadia mm -hmm. brought a few of her several children. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep count. I think she's eight, right? I have, I have eight, children, eight children. Wow. But I yes. had six at that but time. I stopped six at two. At this time. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we met at the weekend school, and, um, and then over the years kept in touch on and off a little bit to try to keep uh, the, the children grounded in their Islamic roots and Muslim faith and to continue friendships. And um, so it was, I like to say I was involved with New Day Syria before it was New Day Syria. Oh, because okay. Nadia's heart bled early on in the process and okay. she just started to collect things to send to Syria. Um, and that was what, in 2011? Maybe. And okay. at that point, we had a weekend school on Ray Ave. Oh, okay. Um, by the Kinder Care. Okay. And so the Arabic weekend school <coughs> had moved, and uh, Nadia needed space to help sort clothing okay. and donations and load up boxes. And it was 2012, 12, uh, just okay. out of 2013. We we had some fun experiences. Yeah, so Basically, I did five containers in three weeks. Wow. Yeah. Like, when you say containers, it's like the tractor trailer size. Foot. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. And, you know, we had the help of a few schools and a few wonderful people like Patricia who made sure that some schools would open up and, you know, we, we got volunteers. Okay. That's now, I don't want to cut you off but I would like to take a look at this clip mm -hmm. just so the audience really understands mm -hmm. before we go into more of the detail. So Colleen, if you can show us the Hope for Our Syria clip, that would be wonderful.
that is like really powerful, mm -hmm. you know, so I can understand why you want to help. But where do, where do you begin? I mean, what, <clears throat> how do you decide what is best to send over there? What can you send over? So New Day Sierra has many different projects, not just containers, you know, okay. humanitarian aid containers. What you saw in this video, um, you saw some footage of the kind of shellings that's still happening right now. Okay. And has been happening, uh, uh, you know, for all this period of time where people are just completely losing their lives and, and barely being able to, to dig out, you know, a live child, yeah. a baby from the rubbles. Um, and it's innocent people that are being affected. It's not people, just, you um, know, government. No, uh, you know, so that's yes. a, there's a lot of politics, a lot yeah. of military, but the bottom line is that these are innocent people that are being affected. Inside Syria, a country of, uh, you know, less than 23 million people, um, around 30 million people have been displaced, and of those, 5 million are inter external refugees. Wow, okay. So over half of the country has lost their home, and most everybody else I is affected. Okay. Uh, so what you saw in the video here, um, First you saw there was a camp and there was this beautiful girl who was reading a poem. Right. And behind her there were standing different children and they were each holding a sign actually of the hometown that they were from. Oh, okay. Because, you I know. I was wondering what the signs yeah, were. Uh, uh, you know, people have been displaced from all over Syria. Many of them have gone to, to areas in, in northern Syria. Okay. Where traditionally there were less bombings until, you know, recently, okay. since November. Um, so, uh, so in those areas, you don't have ISIS on the ground, for example. So, uh, nonprofit organizations have had, you know, some leeway of, of working in those areas without, okay. ha you know, being affected by a lot of um, okay. air shellings, for example. So you saw that the tents, you know, you, you could see a little bit of tents in the background. That's okay. how people, many displaced people, are living. Okay. Uh, and initially, when we started working in this particular area. Uh, probably about a year and a half ago in no. this particular area. Do you focus in on like one area? No, we are, we okay. are in many different areas. Okay, so this particular area. But this particular area, area uh, it's in the countryside of Idlib. When we went there and we saw the tents, I said, why would we just do tents, you know, like why would we support them living in tents? Let's do housing, you okay. know, let's do a pilot project for housing. So and that's those where were the homes the where, you, okay. you know, you saw that they were built homes. Yeah. And these were almost ready homes. And we built a mosque in that area and actually a school also in, in, in an area where um, women families, that's families that don't have a male breadwinner, you know, displaced women okay. families would, would be able to go and live and it under some security and safety. Um, and then how do containers play a role in all of this, right? Well, how does everything play a role in this? Just yeah. tell me more. Well, when you, you know, <laughs> I don't you need my questions. You, you, <laughs> see, you see the kids at the end. Um, you know, they're driving on bicycles. I don't yeah. know if you noticed that. Those bicycles came from Maine, for example. Oh, wow. I mean, we happen to know that they came from Maine because we're following the containers and the footage we got at that oh, point okay. in time. It's not always that we can say we know where this stuff came from, right? But those bicycles came from Maine where we have, you know, uh, another board member, actually, who also is a, an activist, okay. meaning a community activist in, in her uh, uh, town there. And okay. she has been collecting for New Day Syria, uh, she became really involved sh because she wanted to make a difference. She was watching what was happening in Syria, went online and put in containers. Is it even possible to send containers to Syria and up pop New Day Syria? Okay. Um, so she, you know, like many other people actually also here in Massachusetts and people like okay. Patricia and, uh, you know, other people have been collecting items, uh, keeping stuff out of landfills, but not okay. only that, they have also encouraged children to go home and say, when I go into my room, I have so many toys, I don't need all of these toys. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, my own six-year-old daughter, when she gets a new stuffed animal, she knows that there are children that don't have. And right. she will say on her own accord, you know, I am going to donate for Syria. And she'll go home and, and fill, her, you know, a bag of, of stuff. And that's the beautiful thing when children, they start to think about mm -hmm. other children in need and not just, I want more, I want more, I, I want more. A lot of times I think it's the kids that have a lot to teach mm -hmm. the grown-ups too. Absolutely. Yeah. So, now with the containers, you know, on a much smaller scale, I keep thinking about, you know, people bringing suitcases to other areas of the world and getting stuff confiscated and, what kind of customs or 
you know, po policies do you have to go through to make sure that the container can arrive safely mm -hmm. and then that everything in there gets distributed to the people who need it? Yeah, those are very important questions. Prior to New Day Syria, oh, okay. as we just mentioned, I did five containers, right? Okay. Um, and before I did those five containers, I spent months thinking about the process of how do you do this and, you know, which laws do we have to f follow? And at that time, initially, I went with other organizations because I didn't, I wasn't okay. going to start my own organization. At that it's time... probably not, you know, the first thing. I'm going to start a nonprofit. Well, you know, I was doing so much stuff that eventually it became like, this is the next step because we need to continue. We're okay. using... Nadia Lauer's network of, of people that we work with inside Syria, even through these other organizations. Um, so that was part of the process. But okay. basically, when you have a container, <coughs> the way New Day Syria works and the way I've been working all the time is that everything is sorted and packed into different categories. So there's okay. a very detailed packing list. This ensures that you don't send weird items. <coughs> okay. <coughs> I yeah, you can take a yeah, um, that's fine. Yeah. You know, make Patricia do some of the work. <laughs> <laughs> she will talk. You know, uh, in a few minutes. But um, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so that we send, you know, stuff that's you know not red, not bad, um, and are for humanitarian aid purposes, right? Okay, right. Uh, and then when we load each container, you know, we we, we check off everything that that's loaded. Okay, now do you send food as well, or is it like We do send her? food. Okay. Uh, we send also medical supplies, um, okay. many different kinds of items. Uh, and there's, there's, sp there's specific regulations. So once I s started my own organization, okay. New Day Syria, obviously, you know, you have a board, and you have regulations, and now you have to be studying all this stuff, and exactly what about containers, right? Um, so there's something called an OFAC license, for example, that you need to have. You need to work with a shipper, um, a custom clearance um, shipper agency you okay. know, in, in the receiving country. F in the instance of Syria, uh, everything goes through Turkey. Okay. And that has really facilitated this process so that custom clearance happens in Turkey and that's where our agent is and where they work. Okay. And then it goes into Syria and, uh, and in Syria, um, of course, there is some paperwork, but it's not with the government, it's with um, the opposing um, you know, the opposition okay. uh, government sitting there. So there's some paperwork okay. there. Um, so there's, you know, clear um, guidelines for what you can send, how to send it, and uh, okay. what people want to see, what the government in the U.S. needs, and what the government, you know, in Turkey needs to see, and what the people inside Syria, you know, what what they want, and, and for their dignity. Like, they don't want expired food, like we don't mm, want expired yeah. food. Um, and then we have our partners. Uh, New Day Syria has different offices inside Syria. We work with very specific partners. We oh, have okay. a lot of guidelines they have to follow, documentation, lots of photos. How did you video. find out about all these partnering organizations and the regulations? I mean, is it readily available, or did you really have to well, do I, a lot of digging? Uh, yeah, of course, this you have to do a lot of digging. And Sounds uh, a little well, overwhelming. Yeah. Well, um, I, s I spent a year setting up a network inside Syria uh, prior okay. to starting New Day Syria. Now, did you have to travel overseas? No, I haven't traveled. Okay. I've worked with people, for example, that were part of the original movement in Syria. or And okay. we're talking across religion, you know, so it could be a Christian Syrian that was imprisoned with, a, a, you know, a Muslim Syrian, and then now there's a revolution and they have the same goal that they want freedom in their country. Um, so there's a level of trust that you find when people have been in prison for 12 years together, for example. You know, like they were there for the same reason, doesn't matter what their religion was. Okay. Or um, expat Syrians that, you know, still have contact to people there. Okay. People who were out on the streets risking their lives, that then they moved to humanitarian processes inside Syria. And people who are now involved with the local councils inside Syria, oh, where, okay. you know, where when you have when you don't have the government on the ground anymore they people have started local councils so okay. you know it's not like one person working over here in a corner it's very transparent and everybody that work with uh, work with new day syria they are vetted and there's a, a process and okay. it's not a one time process it's a continuous process okay. cuz i'm just you know overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the fact that you were able to single handedly start this whole organization. Well, obviously not single-handedly. I've had, you know. Well, yeah, but people, finding the help. You know, initially, the way New Day Syria. Yeah, you spearheaded it, so. Yeah, I initially, with, you know, the fundraising that was happening for Syria, um, in, 
from my side in okay. 2012. And New Desire was founded in, in 2013. But in, in that one year when I, you know, I started setting up rallies and creating awareness, you know, and outreach about what was happening, I okay. also started fundraising. So many people had knew me from before. Oh, okay. And they knew me locally, but I also have like friends across the United States, uh, you know, and, and, and people they wanted to know. And Facebook was a big part of this, okay. actually, you know, where I was getting information and people were getting information from me and trying to understand the process. And when you know someone, it's easier to start going through their process as they develop it and, you know, they process what's happening. Okay. So, um, yeah, initially there were many people. Not many people, but there were many people. There were people that would get very upset when they, you know, I would post pictures of children that were killed okay. or something in Syria. But it was part of the process of really understanding what was happening in Syria and feeling mm -hmm. sympathy. Me personally, and I think that's a big issue because yeah. it's like I really, you know, I'm afraid to watch the news, but mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like we're receiving a lot of news, you know, a lot of headlines about what's going on. Yeah, I, I mean, well, six years ago in Syria, when people went out rallying on the streets, mm -hmm. they were met by machine guns and, and, and people were literally killed. And they would even show it like live on Facebook. This is happening wow. right now. And you would think that people would react, that the world would react, but it didn't happen. Right. So at some point you become like, I need to show pictures of this child that has been killed or this mother that's crying over her child or something. Right. because. I need to, to, to let people know what's happening. Yeah. You know, sometimes you would look at the pictures and you would be like, if this were my if child. People saw this. No, yeah. if it had been my child, would I want others to look at it? But Oh, uh, yeah, okay, I see. But I maybe, see. I, yeah. yeah. I think there was a big shift at some point, and I can't say exactly when it was for New Day Syria, but okay. Nadia's message of hope and humanity really is what taps into people's mm. spirit of giving. And so, mm. you know, in the, I remember in the early days when there were these postings of scenes that you just, you, you quickly clicked away or scrolled through because mm -hmm. you just, you feel the pain. Um, and that happened for a little while, but I think a lot of people then just turned uh, and, and listened to Nadi's message about hope. And, and the fact that, you know, that we're sending items, tangible things, mm -hmm. providing aid, building schools, giving community, empowering mothers, the fact that that's really what the focus is. It's you're in a tragic situation and we want to help. Okay. And that they know that there's somebody outside of their borders who's willing to help. That the people in the world are listening okay. because they, if you listen to commentary from this past December and in, in the Aleppo situation, they feel like the world has let them down. Right. And when I think about that, I think that they clearly are talking about government and institutions um, that are supposedly in place right. to protect people from these kinds of tragedies. Um, but Nadia's message and New Day Series message is about hope and humanity and wanting for your brother what you want for yourself mm -hmm. and, uh, and being able to send something and for them to pick it up and say, this is from somebody like a world away. They care. It like adds the They connect, care the and, it, and it brings hope to them okay. also. Um, so I, I think it's important to remember that there was a shift. I mean, I remember the days there was like, oh, I, you know, the little boy on the shore you know that mm -hmm. I, I think after that it became real well for a lot of people it became right. real for those of us who've been following well, it it's been for it a lot yeah, yeah it yeah. became real and then it went away uh, but the hope the momentum that New Day Syria has you know once she announced that there was this organization because you're right she did yeah. a lot of behind the scenes work she continues to be the lifeblood of the organization everything flows through Nadia because she understands all of the pieces and there's okay. many moving pieces and Sarah, you, talk, you heard her talk about her network. That means she's in contact with people in Syria, mm -hmm. in a different time zone, all hours of the day and night, and then yeah. dealing with, you know, dealing with the wonderful individuals here okay. who want to help. And it's a high school kid, she was just telling me a story actually about somebody she was talking wow. to. And they want to do something. Right. But and it also, they like the connection with Nadia. And, and, and like you had also said, them. you know, with the containers, it's, it's tangible. So, 
you know, younger kids can relate. You know, like you said, I mean, your six-year-old. The six -year -old. first time I, you know, I, I sent off some infant formula and, you know, I could right. see, you know, what the kind of cans they were and I saw them inside Syria. It was magical. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know, I mean, seeing it's, these bicycles, yeah. we know they came from Maine and yeah, my friend, she picked them out of the dumpster, she took them home and she fixed them up and, you know, wow. that touches people, you know, yeah. like I can make a difference and you yeah. see these children now, they're riding bicycles. Yeah. yeah. They don't have they to. They have a life again. They do. You know, they, yeah. they can be children they again. Do. They do. They, they don't have yeah. to worry. Yeah. You know, yeah. they, they have a few moments where they're riding yeah. a bicycle. Yeah. The stuffed animals, I mean, we have a big campaign for stuffed animals. Yeah. Stuffed animals doesn't have a value. It's they five dollars. I might be dollars. able to help you out there. Yeah, <laughs> well, absolutely. I mean, you have children that haven't had that stuffed have more animal. stuffed animals yeah. than I know what to do with. Well, uh, I'll bring it home to Burlington <laughs> on that comment because uh, the Burlington Mass Parent Network okay, Facebook yep. page, um, I've been posting to them only since about 2015. Okay. But you asked also, what, how do you decide what goes? Right, well, yeah. you decide, you think about what they're going through, and you realize they need just about everything. Okay. Right? They need just about everything. If you because there's you know you there's a finite away, space in that container, so how do you decide? Well, well then we send another container. Then we send oh, another okay. container. Problem yeah. solved. Okay. But when you decide what they need, mm -hmm. you think, I left my home with a suitcase and a backpack and carrying my child, and so oh. what do you think they need when they get to wherever they land? And thankfully, there are refugee camps and New Day Syria sponsors. Because that's kind of things. another question yeah. that I have is, you know, in the video that we saw, they had, you know, substantial, you know, housing. They're not staying in tents anymore. Right. But when New Day Syria built that, how did they know where to put it? That it wouldn't be destroyed in two months, six months? But any work in Syria, there's no guarantee. Okay. But you do the best you can. I mean, we are in the nonprofit business, right? Mm -hmm. Because we believe in, in giving hope. We believe in providing stability and in helping these children get on with their lives. And these mothers okay. look for a future for their children. There's no, there, there are no guarantees. We, we go through a lot, each of us in, in the organization, every single volunteer, every single person, we go through a lot to send those containers, to collect mm -hmm. funds for a house like that. I mean, it's a very basic home. But so you still we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't, need basic necessities. Well, like. we wouldn't be doing all of that if we didn't yeah. feel that it's a somewhat safe area and, okay. you know, everything has been vetted. We can't guarantee air, air strikes, but there's a high probability okay. that this particular area, you know, a mountainous area. It's safer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's why we are working in this area, okay. <laughs> you know, and that's why you have tens of thousands of people that congregate then to those areas and they move towards those areas, okay. you know. Now New Day Series here, we're providing all this. This is, you know, pretty, a pretty safe area. It has no strategic value. Yeah, and there's no military okay. personnel. There's nothing really of value Okay. So in, that, in that sense, okay. other than human beings and their lives. But, you know, who knows mm -hmm. who's rational, you know, government yeah. isn't exactly rational. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. sorry. Not going to get political. Not going to get political. Okay, um, so tell me more about the containers. Like, I'm going to talk about the stuffed animals. Stuffed so we, animals, so we stay yes. Off of the stuffed animals. Scene. So, so I posted to. Uh, so I follow that page, mm -hmm. and um, somebody was asking in Burlington. Right. I have a bunch of stuffed animals. No, none of the local charities will take them for right. whatever reason, and so. Just for know, the record, I was not that person. <laughs> Although well, I do have a boatload of stuffed animals. So, so I responded, uh, and several people responded with different okay. organizations that they thought would benefit mm -hmm. from them. And so I responded, and, and we hey, got why not? many, many donations of stuffed animals and bags of stuffed animals and people writing. And recently, Nadia posted a picture of, uh, of the refugees with the stuffed animals. And so I reposted that to the page. Okay. And you, know, you can see that people are paying attention to that. Um, you know, it, you, you, you count by likes right now. So, you know, when I first posted, I had 15 likes. When okay. I posted something about New Day Syria, it's up to 60 or so, I think, these Sweet. days. And so I just think that the word is starting to get out um, okay. a little bit more in the community because there are many members of the community who've been involved with container work. Mm -hmm. um, 
but the stuffed animals. We also did a drive for the Halloween candy. So you, oh, you, you also find ways to connect to, to the culture here. Oh, okay. Like how can we give because we all know there's too much Halloween candy and people are like, oh, can I sell it to my dentist? Well, you know mm -hmm. what? A kid <clears throat> in Syria is going uh, to love that because they likely haven't had something sweet in a while. Chocolate. And, yeah. <laughs> and I think that you, there was, there's a clip somewhere or, or it's just a snapshot and it's um, a child who has a candy bar and they're actually sharing it. Wow. And to me, that's just so touching um, because here oftentimes we're not sharing. We're Mine. We're, yeah, we're Although speaking of clips, I think we do have a clip of when you were talking about stuffed animals, one of the containers, yeah. um, Colleen's video six, the container, the fun distribution. So it talks about, you know, the, the stuffed animals and juice boxes oh, and, and cool. stuff like yeah. that. So if it's okay, can we yeah, check well, that out right so, now? Yeah. Yeah. شكر لمنظمة نيودي سيريا على تعاونها ومساهماتها الدائمة مع إدارة المخيم على كافة المجالات. So with something like that clip, what happens if you run out of stuff, like on that day? I mean, yes, you can ship another container over, but that's going to take time. Well, I mean, it has been calculated that, that this many children, and, you know, we bring this okay. number of children, you know, for this amount of Because the poor stuff. kids have been through so much that, you know, yeah. I can just picture, no, you know, I mean, that's part of the 20 toys and the 21st kid is like, yeah, where's mine, yeah. you know, so... How do, you, how do you decide? I mean, there's a lot of work that goes behind, you okay. know, setting up different, you know, distributions. Okay. It's not just random. Yeah. Now, the, the village with like the dorm style, you know, the cement buildings, does New Day Syria just have one of those or do you have like several throughout? No, I mean, this is one pilot project. Okay. And it took a while because everything was procured and, and you know, okay. built inside Syria. So. Okay. This actually created jobs for people, and they had to open a factory and, you know, um, have the different materials made mm. and, and transport. So it, it was a okay. big project and interesting in, in many ways. Um, this was made possible because we, we did a lease on the, the mountain. Oh, okay. So that, you know, there was some land that was available. Okay. That's possible in some situations, not always. You want, you know, just like any other situation. Okay. And it has to be feasible uh, economically also. Um, but it's certainly something we want to replicate, uh, either the same way or in a okay. different way, to um, to help families move into actual housing and get on with their lives. Okay. okay so you know, you just kind of mentioned, you know, creating jobs, mm -hmm. and can we kind of expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, I mean we, for example, with schools. Okay. Um, schools. Let's talk about school. <laughs> so I'm a home educator myself, and okay. I know Patricia. She is involved with, with you know local Islamic weekend schools. Uh, education is very important to us, you know, in general as, as mothers. And, and for Syria, Syrians tr uh, traditionally have been, you know, it's a very educated country. Uh, people really value education. And uh, during the period of um, the re Syrian revolution, you know, the first couple of years from 2011 onwards, everything really was on a standstill. People were getting bombed, people were moving around, so school wasn't a priority. Mm -hmm. Uh, many of the families that became refugees became refugees because they needed their children to get a future, you know, f you know, by going to school and, and okay. getting on with their lives. Um, but then a couple of years ago, we started really seeing a shift where people inside Syria, you know, via talking to our partners, would uh, tell us that they needed schools for their children. Okay. 
So they wanted something more than the informal kind of homeschooling settings, or tutoring settings that New okay. Syria, for example, had been supporting. They, they, they wanted to feel like their children were going to school. Well, because there's also like the whole social component in addition to the sure. educational component sure. as well, or at least, uh, And for know. them, you know, for many of the people there, their lives have been hijacked and, yeah. and they needed to get on with their lives. There's a support as, system too. Yeah, even, you know, still th th there's a consideration with safety because schools have been bombed um, by the regime. You wow. know, they have been okay. targeted the same way as hospitals. So there was some concern, but, you know, you need to go to school before it gets bombed. So you need to, you know, go through with the experience first. So yeah, what we started motivation. doing, initially we started just supporting, you know, in different ways or containers were sending items. Um, but in about, I would say the past year and a half or, or two years, we have started schools, we have built a physical, you know, some physical schools, or, or refurbished school buildings, okay. um, caravans, you know, completely refurbished them, gotten furniture, got, you know, set up staff, everything. So the whole, all the schools are just basically run from New Day's here. And this creates jobs for the women. Most of the teachers are women, okay. uh, traditionally speaking. Starts their economy and now they can provide for their children and their own children can go to school. Okay. Um, so that's very exciting actually. Okay, so like, you know, when they, actually, mm -hmm. we, why don't we check out a clip of the schools? Yeah. Um, I think video four is the students can't wait to go to school. Sure. I would love to show that to my kids. <laughs> مدرستنا مدرستنا جينا ورجعنا لك يلي بالحب جمعتنا والله اشتقنا لك مدرستنا مدرستنا جينا ورجعنا لك يلي بالحب جمعتنا والله اشتقنا لك مدرستنا روعة مدرستنا روعة مدرستنا روعة مدرستنا روعة بإذن الله تم افتتاح مدرسة جيل المستقبل حلقتين الحلقة الأولى الابتدائية والحلقة الثانية الإعدادية الابتدائي من الصف الأول للرابع الإعدادي من الصف الخامس إلى الصف التاسع الإعدادي وقمنا اليوم بتسليم الهدايا والقرطاسية إلى الطلاب بإذن الله مستقرين ونتوقع كل المدارس اللي جربنا بها القطاعات الوسطية مدرستنا جينا ورجعنا لك يلي بالحب جمعتنا والله اشتقنا مدرستنا مدرستنا جينا ورجعنا لك يلي بالحب جمعتنا Again, you know, I just, my mindset and my experience has been with the educational culture here. Mm -hmm. So with the educational culture there is, do they just, how do you determine curriculum and, you know, is it grades and classes, you know, like first grades together, second grades together, is it more integrated? Or how are, the, how are the yeah. schools structured? I mean, they're pretty traditional in a country like Syria. Okay. Um, so there have been there, there are some modifications in the curriculum, but they still want to be able to integrate into the regular school system. Okay. Assuming that something would happen and you know everything would be peaceful in Syria again. Okay. Um, so that, that, there's some modifications, but but not a lot. It's it's you know it's not a creative school setting. We are not trying to reinvent the educational experience, okay. um, even though it might be fun. <laughs> um, but, you know, you can only but I'm do just, you so know, if, much. If everything's been destroyed, well, I mean, how I mean, do you get textbooks and what do you, you know? Yeah, I mean, everything is possible. Um, in this case here, this school is, is interesting because it's made out of ca caravan buildings, actually, mm. that another organization okay. had brought in several years ago and just 
left and then... I like the bright colors. And well, that's something we it. brought in. Yeah. But they left the caravan buildings and they said, oh, we're not, like, we lost interest, basically. Yeah. And we <laughs> we'll were, take them. <laughs> well, we were contacted, um, you know, if you want to support this system and, we, it, I mean, this school system and this mm -hmm. whole project, and we had to redo everything, you know, clean out the, the you know, abandoned buildings, fix them up, and all those paintings, I mean, were made you know in a couple of weeks this whole school wow. was 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 set up in a it's couple of weeks. It's very cheery. It's very cheery. If you can get cheery in a war zone. It's yeah. very cheery and and the fun thing about this project is that it, it's supported initially by um, a church in western Massachusetts. Oh okay. So there was a church that contacted us and said um, then that was a woman in the church was like I have to do something for Syrian oh, okay. children. What kind of project can we support and I said well Yes, a school, uh, if you want to support mm -hmm. this, that yeah. would be awesome. Because I'm thinking, you know, just teacher training, you know, well, if you could, take these yeah. people who may or may not have been teachers. Well, that's what I, I mean, think is important to remember as part of the organization's goal is to empower people and okay. to bring them back to what their life was before this happened to them. Okay. And uh, I often forget, though, you know, Nadia talks about, oh, we're going to, make contact and do this project or this project and my mind goes to oh well how are they going to do that but we need to remember that the people who are were affected by this uh, are really all you know they came from normal lives yeah they were they've professionals. already been they teachers were doctors, and, okay. they were engineers they were running gas stations they were bakers they were teachers they were dentists and they just happened to be displaced right now oh, and so to give them the tools yeah, sorry for no I do it I do it, no I do it all the time myself it's it's that and that's why that's why it's so important to do this kind of work is like to empower people not to look at them with pity I mean of course we have sympathy for them but we really know they just need tools okay. they need tools to bring their life back to whatever best level they can achieve uh, okay. yeah. given their circumstance um, right. and to not just Oh, here you you need us. It's not. It's, I know it's it. I just can't do it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I think when when we look at that that school setting, those okay. teachers in the organization of like giving out things and how organized they are, it's really, it's critical to remember that you know they were doing that before the bombings. You know okay. they were running schools and you know and they have all that background. They just needed. They just need the support and the in the okay. in the financial in the tangible tangible you know, items part of it is exactly what you're saying and then i'm also thinking if you're displaced there may not be the position that you've trained for so you have to adapt so is there some of both of that at all do, of course do you, know you what have I'm to saying? adapt all the time yeah. you have highly educated people who now okay. are doing nothing or they're doing something very basic and that's part of the frustration process okay. but again people they need to get on with their lives and they you know they just yeah. have to do the next thing and, and and they're usually doing it now one of the things that triggered me when i was you know looking through the website was i understand you know now that you're explaining this to me i understand that you want to bring them back but are there the resources available to like pay them do they get us you know it, how do you provide a salary for these people that will allow them to get back on their feet to the cost of living or to the level that they were used to living before. I mean, if there's well, still a war going on, I mean. That's what we as a nonprofit organization do. We are, you know, giving them wages. It's okay. not the same wages that they would have earned otherwise. Um, okay. But it's as close to, you know, what makes sense okay. uh, with, with the way life is going on right now. Obviously, more funding more donations would mean that we okay. would be able to, to do more. Um, but, it, you know, in the beginning, we were just having teachers work voluntarily, but it really wasn't sustainable. And people, okay. um, they, I mean, they would help, but it, it was at a very grassroots level, and you needed something more formal. And you need, okay. you need people now to get on with their lives despite what's happening, and, mm -hmm. and not to rely on charity, but to feel they're empowered themselves. And in yeah, order and I to think do that's that, kind of yeah. where so we try to, to I pay need to make fair that wages, connection. and of course we don't have 20 schools if we can only support right. 10 schools, right? It has to be, yeah. to make sense. Because I'm just, you know, it's, I, I have this mental block where it's like, okay, when will, when will your organization be done? I mean, 
and l give everything back to them instead of having them rely on New Day Syria. I mean, do so you I wouldn't want say to that be? We're not having like a reliance relationship. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, we are there to support them. Uh, okay. uh, Patricia, she's talking about empowerment. Obviously, we are funding the school, but they're really running the school. We just make sure that they follow some basic guidelines, uh, okay. um, including at least 50% should be girls, for example. We uh, have some okay. requirements that we need to have fulfilled because okay. they are it, the projects are funded by us, but still, we are not putting the, ourselves onto them and you know saying uh, okay. it has to be done our way or. You, you have to do three hours of, I don't know, art every week or something because I love art and it has to be done my way. Like, okay. you know, you have to give people some space also. Okay. It's both, they're cultural and religious issues and, and you know, regional issues. And, you know, you okay. want to work around that while you still fulfill what is your mandate and what you believe in as an organization. But our main thing really is empowerment. And that, that's a big that's you know like it's in every thing that we do that we don't okay. want you to just do or to just receive we want you to feel it and, and to take ownership okay. i'm just yeah i'm just having that i mental mean when they go and try yeah. how, how do you get there i think well, is it's a valid point i mean i have no idea i'm not good with the numbers nadia is yeah. much closer to the organization in terms of knowing okay. all the projects and the numbers of refugees, but obviously there are still many people who we haven't reached to empower them, okay. and they're, they they are, you know, working the best they can in the system. And you okay. know, I think they get creative within camps, and families okay. start to try to cook, and they trade that cooking with somebody who can do something else. I mean, I really don't okay. know. This is I've heard small stories like okay. this, but uh, again, it's the the bigger the network can grow, the, okay. the more we can recognize that that's what they need. They need empowerment, they need funding to get themselves back on their feet okay. because, yeah, of course, it's a the, very difficult thing The thing is also when you sit as a refugee, of course, when you're inside Syria, you're called displaced, you're not called refugee. When you yeah. leave the border of your country, you're a refugee. Okay. Yeah. Um, but whether you're displaced or a, ref a, a former refugee, when you just sit and you sit and you sit for years, um, you know, in, in a helpless situation, it feels temporary. You 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 don't see that as uh, that job opportunities, or you might be so depressed that you really can't get over your grief or your trauma or what's going on. Well, that affects you, and you know, several years sitting like that, it's going to affect whether mm -hmm. or not you're going to end up being able to really become productive again. Okay. And that's something we want to prevent f from happening. Uh, okay. Uh, that's why when when you was uh, s when we started you say we had. S a lot of emphasis on social business projects uh, for women in Turkey, for example. Okay. Um, and now we're moving towards doing that inside Syria to, you know, to do more things inside Syria in terms of social business. Okay. Uh, so that more women can have a chance of helping themselves. Can you define social business? So social business um, would be something like we support, for example, we set up um, a place with sewing machines and we help them get started. Okay. And we would support that over a period of time okay. while they were being paid fair trade wages okay. with a business model where eventually they would be running it uh, you know, on a self-sustaining basis. Okay. So you start you know, slowly and, and you help women. And usually social business projects in, in those areas also have a strong um, psychosocial, uh, you know, psychosocial uh, aspect okay. to it. Because you know, mm -hmm. they need the support, they need to be with other women and they need to, to, to move on with their lives and have someone um, who is more stable, who can, you know, guide them, you know, okay. also emotionally and, you know, with a, a skill also. Okay. Now, again, when I was reading the website and I was finding out about, you know, the sewing and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the products that they're making, I mean, is it kept within the country or are they starting like an export partnership with other countries? Where does that go? We, we have been doing a lot of knitting in Turkey and okay. bringing that to here. It hasn't been formal, it's not a formal export situation okay. where we have been selling it here, pro basically like a donation, you, you know, uh, and okay. it was a donation and women were being sustained in that manner. Um, we have did something funny in Turkey, it wasn't funny, it was really fun, it was fun to, to do, but mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we, we have been providing winter coats for children in Turkey, um, okay. and then instead of buying, you know, coats in Turkey, we had women sew those coats, and, and mm. The women who were working 
in that social business project. And they were seamstresses themselves back in Syria, okay. so they knew what they were doing. And we would buy their materials, and we had, you know, dozens of women working. And um, so we had one year where all the coats were provided and in Turkey. That was cool. Yeah. It was fun, and we had like local merchants that wanted to to buy actually. You okay. Know. Um, that project was put on hold um, this, this past year just out of logistics and expanding on a school we run in Turkey. But it gave us a taste of how, you know, how easily it's possible to get these women working. Okay. As long as you keep fair trade in mind, obviously, and you don't take advantage because that's obviously happening <laughs> in other instances okay. if you're not a nonprofit organization. Okay. Now, we've mentioned Syria, and we mentioned Turkey, and you've mentioned displaced versus refugee. Mm -hmm. How much of your work gets done outside of Syria? Because um, we've been talking yeah. a lot about the containers. Mm -hmm. Do they just go to Syria? Do they also go to help people in Turkey? And are there other countries involved for you know, with New Day Syria? The niche of Syria, other than our focus on women and children, is really to stay inside Syria. Okay. Because we really want to help people stay in their home country. Um, we do work in Turkey, but um, it's very small, you know, you know, on a very small level compared okay. to what we do in Syria. And then, by default, we are here in New England and in Massachusetts there are many issues with refugees, you know, resettlement issues. Okay. So we are helping um, several cases, uh, both on a personal basis and also on, on a general scale with different things. In containers, humanitarian aid containers, medical aid containers, they only go to inside Syria. Okay. And um, we've done a little bit uh, in Lebanon, a little bit in, in Jordan. Um, but then we decided we don't want to spread ourselves everywhere. Okay. <laughs> We have such we need to focus. <laughs> we have such good work going on inside okay. Syria, and a lot of organizations pull themselves out. And at the same time, we were just like enhancing and improving and fine tuning on our documentation process and how we were vetting people okay. who work for us. That we, you know, we feel very confident about our work inside. Okay, you know, you, you say focus, and I'm like thinking, but I'm reading your website, and there's like so much that you're actually doing. You know, between the establishing schools and establishing home and the containers and the medical treatment. That's what happens when you're multitasking mothers. You have all these balls <laughs> in the air. <laughs> so. so we do only have a few minutes left sure. now, but I do want to let the audience know that this conversation will continue because we will be covering. I have three pages of questions here, and I haven't looked at them once, um, but... This work is really valuable, and I'm just, you know, in the, in the few minutes left, minutes that we have left now, I'm thinking, when you started this, how, it seems like you've expanded really quickly. Is that just my perception, or did you really do that? And it seems like this is a huge organization, and, you know, looking at some we of the are, videos, I, you have, like, yeah. Marketing we are a huge and organization, and we're doing amazing work. Um, and we have time an, to pat yourself on the back. <laughs> well, we have an incredibly <laughs> low overhead. Actually, our overhead is one percent or something like that. Oh, and we get wow. all of this okay. done. Um, it's and that was that's part of why we do what we do. We really okay. want to make sure that the aid goes to where it's needed. Okay. Um, yeah, um, the growth has been exponential. Uh, the work is nonstop. But it's because we have a, a good team and, um, you know, a, a great team and a lot of volunteers, a lot of donors that really believe in our mission and support our work for women and, and children, you know. Okay. And, and they, love, they love the photos. They love, you know, the sense of, of connection that they get when they go to our Facebook page. Okay. Now, if somebody wanted to participate in New Day Syria, mm -hmm. either as a donor or a volunteer, is that information on your website and where would they go and what kind of things or people or skills are you looking for? You, you want That's kind of a loaded question, I know. You can I go know, to so. the website <laughs> and you can follow, if you're on Facebook, you okay. can follow uh, New Day Syria on Facebook. And I would say that we would welcome anyone and everyone with any kind of skill that they might have. Um, as long as there's an interest in helping humanity, then you well, are yeah, welcome. Well, yeah, that's a given. Yeah, well, <laughs> sometimes it's not. But oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that uh, you, 
there are containers uh, now maybe twice, sometimes three times a month. There's always sorting and packing to do okay. that gets posted to the website, um, uh, not to the Facebook page, it doesn't get posted to the website. Uh, there are fundraisers in this area, uh, usually in the spring and then in the fall. Okay. Uh, and there's always ongoing campaigns um, that you can just go to PayPal, go th th through the uh, website and go to PayPal or Razu or, or, or mail it trying to, to keep up with all of the funder yeah. online fundraising. I just know that but PayPal doesn't like me. <laughs> so I've, now you mentioned and you fundraisers. You can always drop at One Oak Street in Burlington. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Which also is inf uh, information available on the website. Yeah. Now you mentioned a spring fundraiser. Yeah, we usually have a fundraiser. We're going to have our fundraiser in Lowell May twentieth. Okay. So um, that's like a formal event, but that's it. Is it like a, a, a auction or no, is it's it a, it's a dinner? dinner. Okay. It's a formal fundraiser where we, you know, we, we show what black we tie? do. Not black time. No. <laughs> well, you said formal. I don't know. Formal well, it's is. formal. You know, <laughs> if you have to, you know, dress up a little bit. Okay. Oh, you mean I have to wear grown-up shoes? <sighs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that information posted on the website as well? If people yeah, we, we put it on the website, but really, our Facebook page is really okay. where everything is, is so happening. Facebook is, is more. Facebook go is probably the to most. Facebook. Go to Facebook. <laughs> okay. So, and is it? Is it just that one fundraiser, or do you do other We have ongoing. I mean, ongoing. The, the need in Syria for help, you know, or for sponsoring containers is ongoing. For supporting these schools, this is an ongoing need. And a lot of people, they get that. They'll go to their, you know, community or their church or their synagogue or their mosque and say, there's this particular project, or we have to do something for children. They're freezing okay. right now. And they'll collect, and then they'll mail us a check, for example, or they will hmm. tell people about our work, and everybody okay. will, will donate. Um, the formal fundraisers, it is more sort of a, everybody, let's see, you know, I want to show you what we've been doing in the past year, and I want you to feel good about everything, and so that will continue the work, you know, you will still support us. Um, yeah, but, you know, it's an ongoing basis that uh, funds are needed. Okay. Well, we are just about out of time, so mm -hmm. thank you very much for coming. Yeah, thank you. And I would like to thank everyone for tuning in this evening. I hope you have been inspired by the work of these wonderful women, and I will see you around town. Thanks, good night.